Hello. <clears throat> this morning we're, we are at the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History. This is the main entrance. We're going to start our tour outside before it gets too hot. So hang in there with us and we'll take you through the museum. We're outside the museum to the military display of aircraft and we'll kind of walk you around so you can see everything but we're gonna start off with this this is an a7c just like the airplanes that I used to work on on a different model I worked on the e a7e But throughout the history of the A-7, which was dubbed the Corsair II, they made a trainer out of it. In other words, a, a two-seater. Normally it's a one-seater, but this is a TA-7C. It was a heck of a bird. It was an attack aircraft, bomber, basically. And you can see the second seat they added. And when they made it a trainer, most of the time it was a single seat attack airplane. I'll give you a close up of, the display board. info panel it's quite an airplane now the Air Force also had A7s and they were the A7D and the D model for the Air Force had an onboard start generator where they could start it without an external um, device we called them a huffer it was nothing more than a a mini air blower that they would hook up to the airplane to get it started. And the Air Force had the D model, which they didn't need that external buffer. Each one of the pylons could be loaded. The E model had a missile rack on the fuselage, uh, partially extended under the wing, where it could have rockets but that was the E model. You can see the radar dome with the two PDOT tubes and the air refueling probe. And you can see the launch bar mechanism down underneath that would be lowered by hydraulic pressure and locked into the catapult before it was launched Now the E model, you can see they had guns on the side of the earlier A7s. The E model had a 20, 20 millimeter cannon um, down underneath of there. It was it was more like a Gatling gun, and when they fired it, it sounded like just a big long burp of 20 millimeter shells and down underneath the nose down there you see three little lights well those are the approach lights as it was coming into the carrier red green and yellow yellow meant okay on speed on glide slope and they would if the tail hook wasn't down those approach lights would flash alerting the carrier to the uh, landing officer that his tail hook was not down but it was quite an airplane yes it is in very good shape for a C model like the 
Yeah, that was a B and it's a really bad shape. It was quite an airplane. Let's just look at this info panel here. And to the left is the uh, F-105. And I believe they, they called those the Thunder Chief, or the Thud. And just ahead is a MiG-21, Russian, Soviet Union, I should say. But these were used in the very early days of the Vietnam War. And I, I believe, if I'm not wrong, they, they used to call those a thud, thud pilots. But I'll see what this, yeah, the Thunder Chief, yeah. I haven't completely lost my mind. These were a workhorse during the Vietnam War. And there's a, a good shot of the Russian MiG. The Navy used the F-4 Phantom and its fighter configuration on board carriers and eventually the the phantom the f4 phantom was replaced by the f14 tomcat but the air force used the f105 we'll come over here and give you another shot of the mig-21 Okay, so next we have the F-16 Falcon. It was flown by the New Mexico Air Guard. It also looks in, in really good shape. Of course, they, they really should since they're out here in the desert. You don't have the harsh weather to play havoc with them. It was quite an airplane too. You see the rocket launchers on the ends of the wing. And then here you can see the atomic bomb test tower. Obviously a replica, right? I mean... <laughs> These are quite some airplanes. Now we come to a, an iconic aircraft, the B-29. Now this was a super fortress and the B-52, which is just to our right here, which I'll show you, was called the Strato Fortress. But there's the B-29. And the most famous one was the Enola Gay. And you see a bird perched up there on the prop. <laughs> They've got screens on them so the birds will stay out of the engines, but it's hard to get this airplane, get a good shot of this one because it's so huge. I'll 
try to get back here a ways. This is a real iconic airplane. I guess you would say that it's it's the second heavy bomber that the U.S. built. Because before it, the B-17 was being used in Europe. And the B-29 was used in the Pacific to fight the Pacific War. But this is obviously bigger than the B-17. It's a heavier bomber. And it's the first one that could carry the atomic bomb. But it's it's quite an airplane. Quite an airplane. Of course, the most famous one is the Enola Gay. And here we have what they affectionately called Fat Man, or the first atomic bomb that the 29 carried down in its bomb bay, down underneath. And they have an info panel here that explains it, how they did it. Now you can pause the video so you can read it, but I'm gonna scan you the pictures so you can see. in the Pacific Islands. But this thing had to fit. Down there in the bomb A doors. That's some massive main gear, isn't it? Just behind here is the Army's atomic cannon. Of course, everybody had to have one, right? I mean, one military force couldn't be the only one. So the Navy had theirs, the Air Force had theirs, and the Army had theirs. But they used an atomic cannon to shoot an atomic shell. But that's what it is. And of course, you can't talk about bombers without talking about the B-52, the workhorse of the Vietnam War. A lot of these things were lost during Vietnam, but it's an iconic airplane that, oh my, it, it flew a lot of years. Several different versions of it, models of it, but it was an iconic airplane that, that held its own weight, I'm telling you. And I've heard stories about it, but this is the first time I've been this close to a B-52. Uh, the Air Force's museum in Wright Pat, uh, Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio, is, a, is an excellent place to see aircraft. And I believe they do now have a B-52 as well as an SR-71. But the 52 was, it was an iconic airplane. Used mainly in the Vietnam War, but also used during the Air Force SAC, Strategic Air Command, where these things flew around the clock, around the world. And you can see they were so big it could get so heavy that they had to have little wheels out here on the end of the wing to help support them. You can't mistake that big, tall tail. Quite an airplane. Just taking a look at the nose of this thing is, oh, it's iconic. And in a way, beautiful. I'm gonna walk over here and look at the information panel, so I'll give you a look at those. 
if you see the main mounts on this thing, they're about as big as a, a 29, but this one's got four of them. See if I can get it all fitted in here for you. You can pause the video to, to read that. Now, I'm not sure if this is gonna come out, but I'm gonna give you a shot of up inside the wheel well. It may not come out too good, but. See if I can get you close enough to for that. And you can pause the video again to, to read it. But here she is. In the evolution of the heavy bombers for the US. I was just telling Tammy that in the, in the movie with Jimmy Stewart, and I think it's called Strategic Air Command, uh, this, this airplane, the 47, is in that movie. So. Yeah, that's quite an airplane, too. I was just telling Tammy the, the one after, before this, I think, then the one after it was a Delta Wing configuration, and I don't remember what it was called. Quite an airplane. And then with the 52 and this 47, I mean, with refueling from tankers, they could fly pretty much as long as they needed to. And we're back inside the museum, and I just wanted to show you this. This is pieces of the Berlin Wall. You can see the display here. secret but they also have Russian spies in them. you can see how it's constructed there when they first start testing it That's something, eh?
This museum is quite something. There's lots and lots of things in the museum. And here's one of the, to me, the Trinity flag. It flew at the Trinity base camp. 48 star flag. Here you see the gadget. Survival gear. Like a bomb shelter. Well, you all know what this is. And what this is. Yep. Here you go. This is affectionately known as the walleye. You can read that there. The information panel, but this is another one we used to load on board the A7E when I was on board the carrier. Many times when I start up the airplane and for someone else to do maintenance on it. Of course, there was no bombs loaded on the airplane at the time we were doing this, but there's a little joystick that was in the cockpit. When I got bored, I used to play around with the joystick and the map display would move so I, I could play like I was bombing Fresno. <laughs> oh boy. You can see the, the floor, the periodic table. So will start up here. Back up. It's kind of neat, isn't it? Pretty cool.
you can spend hours in the museum here. Uh, it's just lots of stuff to see. I mean, the video would be an hour long, but I hope you enjoyed our visit and uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for following along with us.